Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon and good night and good morning for those that are watching us online. Uh, my name is Hugo, I am a Google Developer Expert in AI and I'm also a Product Lead at Nubank. And I'm here today to talk with you about web AI in the industry. Uh, more specifically, I'll be sharing a business case of how TensorFlow.js has driven what you see on the supermarket shelves. And I'd like to start with something that may be obvious for you, but when you get into a supermarket, companies are trying to influence you uh, to make a purchase. Uh, recent researches say that around 70% of the shopping decisions are taken once you are inside the store. And to influence you, uh, companies use a lot of psychological tactics, human behavior studies, and a lot of data. And uh, as you can imagine, to create strategies to uh, place products on every shelf of every supermarket uh, a company is working on is very challenging. And I'm here to present to you how a Brazilian company managed to do that using web AI. And uh, here's the initial scenario. Uh, this company has around 10,000 points of sale in Brazil that are spread about uh, what 1,000 different cities and they have more than 20,000 people organizing the shelves. And this company owns about uh, 40 different products. And to properly scale uh, product placement strategies in all those points of sales, uh, this company started created, creating a system where they leveraged regional managers uh, to send strategies to the people uh, working inside the stores. And here's what they did. Um, the company started to buy sales data from all supermarkets to understand the sales volume by product. So they would know, oh, this product is selling more, this other product is selling less, and etc. And they started to create the marketing strategies, as I mentioned to you. So every regional manager in the country has its own marketing strategy. And they started to feed a recommendation system. And this recommendation system was generating shelf execution tasks, or sets. And these sets were sent to the merchandiser app. And merchandiser is the person organizing the, the shelf, okay? And uh, this person will have two uh, major touch points with the app, at the beginning and at the end of the day. And this happens in this way because supermarkets don't have a good internet connection. So at the beginning of the day, uh, they go outside the supermarket, download all the tasks, and then, then they go inside the supermarket and execute the tasks, like take photos of everything they did, and at the end of the day, they go outside and upload everything in the app. And this was important to feed the recommendation system back with uh, in-store data and guarantee that the tasks being generate, generating every day uh, are considering the, the situation of the store. However, <laughs> when we implemented this, around 25% of the in-store time of the merchandiser was spent uh, in a specific task called share of shelf. Basically, in this task, uh, the merchandiser had to count by hand every product in the, in the shelf for a given category to say the, the share of shelf of that given product. And I invested some time explaining all this flow to you because this project started with the challenge of optimize the, the in-store journey of the, the merchandiser. And the key challenge was how could we uh, automatically measure the share of shelf, the key task the merchandisers uh, were doing. Uh, but these challenges come with uh, three strong requirements. The first one, uh, the solution to recognize the products should run uh, at, in at least 40 different products because share of shelf consider also uh, products from the competition. It should run offline because supermarkets don't have good internet connection and it should run in real time. What the business challenged us here was um, can we make uh, the process of verifying and calculating the share of shelf as fast as doing an eye scanning of the, of the shelf? And to solve this problem, we combined uh, the two most powerful program languages in the world under the same machine learning framework, TensorFlow. Uh, we used Python for training an object detector, and then we converted it to TensorFlow.js so we could deploy in the merchandiser app and run everything in real time and offline. And I will explain to you the main things we did on this journey in the next few slides. Okay, so first we choose uh, uh, object detector. I'm not gonna deep dive in the criteria here, but Yolovin 7 was chosen. 
And as every deep learning project, we started with the challenge of data. So we pre-trained the model on an open source data set called SKU110K, which has 110,000 uh, images of uh, generic labeled products that we called SKUs. And we labeled manually inside the company around 5,000 images of 40 different products. And then we trained the model in a Colab Pro notebook and surprisingly, in the first iteration, the model achieved very good results. And, you know, with business pressure and et cetera, we decided to put it in production and see how it behaves. So, uh, and that was uh, what we did. So we converted to TensorFlow.js. Uh, this is a, a, a real uh, screenshot of the model. As you can see, it's like a JSON file with some binary fa files uh, together. In total, the model had 25 megabytes. And we just uploaded it in the Merchandiser app. And every time that they got a share of shelf task execution, they just click on a button, they open the camera, and then scan the product. As you can see, this is the new flow. Uh, everything pretty much stayed the same, with the exception that at the beginning of the day, when downloading the tasks, they are also downloading uh, the last model weights. So they could have it updated. And here's how it looks like. This is a video I recorded last week. Uh, as you can see, I had to remove the labels from the products for privacy reasons, but uh, it achieved what uh, we had to, to achieve with the model. It can recognize the, the SKUs pretty well. And as you can expect, uh, since I'm talking here, we get a very good results with it. Uh, first, uh, it increased market share on the companies using the model. Uh, in, in a period of one year, we noticed a single digit percent increase in market share. Also, uh, in a period of one year, the solution increased uh, revenue in a three digit million um, in, in all the, the stores that we applied it. And it was massive uh, use. It. We rolled it to the 20,000 merchandisers. It's like in, in the first year, everybody was using it. But uh, besides the success of this first iteration uh, of the product, the merchandisers do other tasks in the store, right? So the next question of the project was how to empower the regional managers to create their own models for verifying new tasks. For, for example, uh, how could then create models to answer questions such as, um, is the Christmas activation being built as expected? I'm pretty sure that everybody has seen this kind of thing when getting to the supermarket at the end of the year. So it happens that the process of training and testing a model is not very simple. Uh, so we had to find a way to empower the regional managers, uh, which are people with low technical skills, to manipulate the training, testing, and even the deployment um, tasks of creating a model. So again, we combined three tools for easing the training and testing pipelines for the regional managers. We used Label Studio, Colab, and Visual Blocks that you saw today. And now I walk you through uh, the main things we did uh, to the regional managers to facilitate the model development. Okay, starting with Label Studio. Uh, we hosted an internal version of the tool where the regional managers could upload the uh, photos taken by the merchandiser during the day. And then they could uh, create their own classes and create data sets, like uh, just labeling them in the tool. And it was very interesting because uh, regional managers have a lot of things to do. And since the solution uh, was hosted like internally, they could in their spare time, like label a bunch of products and then, I don't know, uh, ask another regional manager to help them. And once they have the data set created, uh, they have a very easy documentation that they could follow to get this data set and upload in a Colab notebook to start a training. And it was very, very simple. They just needed to define the project name, uh, the number of classes they would like to detect, and execute the notebook. Very easy. And then we have a, a self-hosted visual blocks server for uh, model testing. And once the training pipeline finished, inside the same notebook, they could connect to a, a visual block server and get this model that was just trained and create an inference pipeline with it, with that drag and drop interface that you saw today. And once they get into a flow that works for their business case, 
they request a central data platform team to deploy it in production. And this central team was required because we need to apply some governance stuff on the top of the model to guarantee that uh, it was uh, not doing anything wrong and also to guarantee some quality checks. And um, next, this is the, the simplified view of what changed in the solution architecture. As you can see, this whole part of sales data, marketing strategy, recommendation system stayed the same. But now in the middle, we have this flow of labeling, training, testing, and deployment, where the regional managers are empowered to create their own models and leverage the power of like Web AI uh, to drive their business. And as you can expect, this also brought a lot of benefits to the operation. First, on average, we measured a 40% increase in productivity for the merchandisers using the solution. And this measure was done in the period of two years. Uh, the real-time detections also increased the accuracy of the data being gathered in the stores because uh, merchandisers have real-time feedback on, on what they are seeing in, in the smartphones. So it guaranteed that what's uh, feeding the recommendation system is good data. And the solution was largely used. Uh, there are over 10 models running at the same time right now in the stores. And we are optimizing tasks such as uh, inventory management and also in-store customer engagement. And yeah, everything I presented to you today, uh, like model conversion to TensorFlow.js, inference and deployment is open sourced. So if you want to know more about this whole project, you can read the QR code and access a blog post I, I wrote about it. And yeah, if you prefer, you can also reach me on X, on LinkedIn, and open to talk about Web AI in general. Thank you. Mm -hmm.